Our first hymn is hymn 405, All Things Bright and Beautiful, verses 1 and 4. We will just speak it together. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, he made their glowing colors, he made their tiny wings. He gave us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell how great is God Almighty who has made all things well. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. And if you will all say with me, Canticle 12, a song of creation. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. In the high vault of heaven, glorify the Lord. Sing praise and give honor forever. Let the earth glorify the Lord, sing praise and give honor forever. Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills and all that grows upon the earth, sing praise and give honor forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that move in the waters, all birds of air, glorify the Lord, sing praise and give honor forever. Glorify the Lord, O beasts of the wild, and all you flocks and herds, O men and women everywhere. Glorify the Lord, sing praise and give honor forever. God be with you and also with you. Let us pray. We come together to rejoice with God, the creator, at the wonderful creation around us. O oh God, you love all things that exist and despise none of the things which you have made, for you have made nothing you didn't love. You spare all things, for they are yours. O oh Lord, who loves the living, for your immor immortal spirit is in all things. And together, let us say, let us sing to the Lord a new song, a song for all the creatures of the earth. Let us rejoice in the goodness of God, shown in the beauty of little things. Let us marvel at the little creatures who are innocent in God's sight. Let us extol God's handiwork in the complexity of their lives. Let us not be haughty or proud, too full of ourselves to praise the Lord of little things. Let us rejoice in the other world sublime and mysterious that God has made the world of earthworms burrowing in the ground, the world of skylocks soaring above us, the world of foxes playing around their dens. Let us hear the divine rejoicing throughout the whole earth. The earth is mine and the fullness thereof. And now we have the reading of the lessons. A reading from Job, but ask the beast and they will teach you, the birds of the air and they will tell you, or the plants of the earth and they will teach you, and the fish of the sea will declare up unto you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 104, which can be found on page 736 in the Book of Common Prayer. We'll say verses 25, 28 through 32, and 37. 
O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Romans. For the expectation of the creature waits for the revelation of the sons of God, because the creature also itself shall be delivered from the servitude of corruption and into the liberty of the children of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the gospel hymn, hymn 400, verses 1 and 7. And if you will join me in speaking them. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voices, let us sing. Alleluia, alleluia, bright burning sun with golden beams, pale silver moon that gently gleams. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let all things their creator bless and worship him in humbleness. Oh, praise him, alleluia. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. O oh, praise him, O oh, praise him, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. And he, will send them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of an ass. The word of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> For her collection of poetry entitled Dog Songs, the poet Mary Oliver wrote this poem. It's entitled Little Dog's Rhapsody in the Night, and in parentheses, Percy Three. And Percy was the third dog she had that she named Percy. Um, he puts his cheek against mine and makes small expressive sounds. And when I'm awake or awake enough, he turns upside down, his four paws in the air and his eyes dark and fervent. Tell me you love me, he says, tell me again. Could there be a sweeter arrangement? Over and over he gets to ask it and I get to tell. Henrietta introduced me to the phrase, living examples of divine grace to describe our animal companions. What grace is greater than being given the chance to say, I love you over and over again? I'm not sure how many of you remember the Good News Bible. It's an artifact of the mid 1970s. I think it was an attempt to make the Bible a little hipper, more accessible but then everything and everyone was trying to be hipper in the 1970s. So, but there is a simple beauty to some of the language. And Genesis one verses chapter 24 and 25 reads, the God commanded, let the earth produce all kinds of animal life, domestic and wild, large and small. And it was done. So God made them all and he was pleased with what he saw. I like that. 
even though it is describing an act of creation, it isn't grandiose, it's simple and sweet. And he was pleased with what he saw. Unfortunately, for as beautiful as that language may be, not even the hip good news Bible can escape the troubling language we find in verse 26, where after God creates humans, God gives them power over all creatures. Or as the King James Version reads, God gave man dominion over all creatures. These words and other translations like them have over the millennia served to justify for humanity to wreck all forms of destruction on the beings that we share this earth with. But the message, which is a translation of the Bible by the poet Eugene H. Peterson, interprets Genesis 1 verse 26 this way. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves upon the face of the earth. To be made in the image of God is to reflect God's nature, a nature that takes responsibility for the welfare and well-being of all living creatures and for the earth itself. This is one of the reasons why a prayer service like this is so important. Tonight, by remembering with our prayers and devotions, those animals who have blessed our lives and who bless them still, we are helping to bring ourselves as human beings into right relationship with creation. We're acting as images of God, the way that we were created to be. In this prayerful expression that acknowledges the relationships of love and care that can have and are existing between us and the animals in our lives, our nature is reflecting God's nature. In the second book of Samuel, we read that the Lord sent the prophet Nathan to King David. Included in the message that Nathan brought to David is this passage. A poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up, and it grew up with him and, him and with his children. It used to eat of his meager fare, drink from his cup, and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. That is not dominion or power over. That is love for. When I mentioned to a colleague that we were having a prayer service for animal companions, I was accused of having a lack of knowledge of the liturgical calendar. Uh, their point being that this is not the feast of St. Francis and we only bless animals on that day, which simply is not true. Every Sunday, we offer gifts and thanksgiving to Jesus, the Paschal Lamb. We ask the Lamb of God to have mercy upon us and to grant us peace. Now, I know that none of us think of Jesus as an actual lamb, but that image of Jesus as a lamb, of Jesus as an animal, pervades our worship of him. Our faith understands that there is something about the image and idea of that animal, the lamb, that conveys something essential about the nature of Jesus. Which brings me back to that phrase that Henrietta introduced me to, living examples of divine grace. There is something holy and sacred about the relationship we have with the animals in our lives. Through their presence in our lives, they have the ability to empower us to remember that we are made in God's image. They are able to evoke in us our God nature. And so finally tonight, another poem from Mary Oliver. The sweetness of dogs. What do you say, Percy? I'm thinking of sitting out on the sand to watch the moon rise. It's full tonight. So we go and the moon rises, so beautiful it makes me shudder, makes me think about time and space, makes me take measure of myself, one iota pondering heaven, Thus we sit, 
myself thinking about how grateful I am for the moon's perfect beauty and also, oh, how rich it is to love the world. Percy, meanwhile, leans against me and gazes up into my face as though I were just as wonderful as the perfect moon. Amen. Now, if you'll all join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We praise you for the creation of the world and all the living creatures in the earth, sky, and sea. We are thankful, we are thankful oh Lord, for the gentle eyes of the deer, the friendship of dogs, the purr of cats, the strength of bears, the beauty of a hippo, the humor of chimps, the intelligence of gorillas, the grace of dolphins, and the magnificence of whales, Help us to keep them safe. We are thankful, O oh God. For the bond between all living creatures created by the same author and for the memory of our kinship to the animal world kindled each time a rainbow appears. We are thankful, O oh God. Keep us mindful of the vision of the peaceable kingdom in which all living creatures dwell in harmony. We are thankful, O oh God. Give us eyes to see our responsibilities, not just to human community, but to the community of all living creatures. Let us be mindful of the rabbinic injunction that the way of a person treats an animal is an index to their soul. Help us to see, O oh God. In this world so full of violence and unkindness, let us act in a gentle way toward all your creatures. A simple stroke on a dog's head, a scratch on a cat's chin, and food for birds in winter. Help us to be gentle, O oh God. We give you thanks, most precious God, for the beauty of earth and sky and sea, for the richness of mountains, plains, and rivers, for the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers. We praise you for these good gifts and pray that we may safeguard them for our pros prosperity. Prosperity, pros I'm sorry. Grant that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation to the honor and glory of your name, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, my dear friends in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And now we have the parade of pets.
Wow. <laughs> that was tearing me up here, folks. <clears throat> All right. And now the blessing of the pets. So uh, I see, oh, there's, is it peanut butter? Uh, actually, why don't we go to a uh, gallery view? Ginger for the blessing so that all the animals are available. I think each person has to do gallery view themselves. I'm gonna remove spotlight, oops, on me because I'm the one recording. There we go. Okay, now I can see everybody. Uh, here comes Irene. There's, oh, look at all these guys. This is so cute. Oh my gosh. You are all so wonderful to do this. Oh, there he is. Okay. So it is my great honor and definite pleasure. God of manifold blessings, source of all that is good and true and holy, raise us up to see the world through your eyes so that we may treasure each blessed creature alive with your spirit and touched by your creative hand. And may the blessing of this wonderful God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier be upon us, upon you, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, with your breath you gave life to all creatures and declared them good. Keep us mindful of the first most holy blessing as we gather here today to offer our own blessing upon these, our companion animals. Remind us always that we were created in your image, the image of a loving and compassionate God. And in this image, we are called to care for your creation. Open our hearts and minds to the lessons we may learn from our companions, to live fully in the present, to love unconditionally, to face each day expecting joy. Help us always to do your will on earth, so that you may look upon our work and declare it good. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of the new covenant of Jesus Christ grant us grace to fulfill our promise and to show mercy to other creatures as God has shown mercy to us. Amen. Please everyone unmute. Oh my gosh, look at all these amazing animals. I just love animals. <laughs> oh, wow. So that was very touching. Oh, very that nice. nice. That video. <laughs> Henrietta, Henrietta, <sighs> the big, the big credit here for putting this all together. Mm -hmm. um, well, it goes right back out to Kevin, who put together that beautiful video and took care of all that and all you readers. It was thank you. Thank you. All. Yes. Lovely. I just want to show a picture of our dog, Riley. Oh, oh. I, I didn't get to send it in, but he's here somewhere in the house. Oh. <laughs> oh. Probably he hiding. used to get to hear Riley during finance committee meetings. Oh, yeah. You can hear him. Anytime you're on the Zoom at the Bass House, you'll probably hear Riley. He's, he's always on watch for what's happening out in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> Henrietta, I loved the picture of Grace. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I <was just> <laughs> how, many, how many different animals did we get to see? We saw so many. Chicken, a goose, horses, dogs. 